Hey world, um, my name is Serena, I am from Ohio, and basically, I haven't made a vlog in like forever, and I need to catch up on that. Now that I am probably going to be able to do this a lot, and it'll help me with my self-esteem hopefully and because I'm gonna say a lot of things that um, I really do need to get off my chest and basically I <laughs> I'm the kind of person that doesn't see themselves as the way I am Basically, I see myself as a whole other person, but whenever I'm around other people, I act totally different. I don't act like myself. The only people that have seen myself is my best friend that I've known all through elementary school and up till now, and up to a senior year in high school, and my boyfriend of three years. Um, it's, it's been difficult. And not even people at my job know exactly who I am, where I'm, what I do, where I'm from. Um, yeah, so basically I'm going to spiel it out onto the internet, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> it is right now, um, I think 10 o'clock at um, night. And it is the 27th of February and 2016. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, I speak out from awareness. Um, I have two brothers with autism. Um, People think it's easy to deal with that, and it's not. Initially, it isn't, because you got to deal with the struggles of them not living a normal life. They don't live a normal life like I do, and one of them, he's a sophomore in high school, and he is on honor roll. He is doing extremely well. And he is high functioning. He doesn't like loud noises. He doesn't like crowds. He doesn't like to be crowded. He's like the gentle giant. And the other one, he's in fourth grade. He's in elementary school. And he's got ADHD, fetal alcohol syndrome added with the autism. But it's he he can function well with it but mainly his only problem is his ADHD and that's the only thing about it and how I deal with it throughout the day is I'll sit there and I'll be like okay so you just pop a movie in for the um the older one and for the literal one you have to do stuff for because the bigger one he can obviously fend for himself but there are some things that you do have to help out and the um one that's a sophomore his is Chris and he has a twin and his twin is normal and his twins a junior in high school and they weren't born a year apart that's let me explain that for you um when we had them in school it was in a different school it was in like a private school meant for autistic kids or kids with special needs with down syndrome or Rett's syndrome um and we had them in that for years for years and um when he got out they put him in public schools because government couldn't fund it and so we got transferred to Columbus City Schools, which I ended up going 
to um, elementary school and at Westgate Alternative Elementary School instead of French Run Elementary because I was on I was in Middlesbrough, Ohio, and then we moved from there to Grove City, and then we're over in Columbus. It, it was hard. Um, <laughs> it, it's extremely irrelevant. Um, but it's kind of a struggle. Um, it really is. Sorry, I get free drinks at my job. I work at Subway. But, um, so... We got him over to public school, but he had to be a year behind Sean, which is his twin. And when that happened, Sean ended up going to high school. Christopher ended up staying in middle school. And once he, Sean hit sophomore year, Christopher was a freshman in high school. He was starting off high school and he goes to Centennial and both me and Sean go to Briggs. And Trevor, he goes to Georgian Heights. Now, I'm talking about my brothers, <laughs> but I haven't talked about my, the rest of the family. I have a loving mother and, and a loving father. Um, my dad and my mom both work for the district that I go to school in. Um, my mom, she's an ED aide, but at first she was a lunch lady. Um, she was actually a lunch lady at my high school my freshman and sophomore year. Um, my dad, he's a head custodian over at Wedgwood Middle School, which I also went to school when I was in middle school. Um, me and my brother both work at Subway. Yeah, it's, to talk about working with your brother, it's odd. Because you do get to hear the faults that he does, and he gets to hear the faults that you do. And when it comes down to hours, it's really easy because if I can't go one day, I can go like, oh, here's my brother, he can do it. And that's the only ways that we could talk. It's... I want to build a better relationship with my family but I feel in order to do that I have to change everything and for me to be as stubborn as I am it's gonna be hard and that's not all of the family actually my aunt my aunt is a widow um, her husband died um, in <laughs> 2014 in November. So we had, it's been a year since he's been gone. Um, she so far has made it. And she actually does share a room with me in this new house that we moved in that I talked about in my last video when I sang but it was when I had like deeper darker red hair but now it's like brownish it's kind of like I'm on fire kind of but I'll get there in a bit um there's a lot that I need to cover up on I've had so much happen to me at the beginning of this year and towards the end of last year. In December, I lost my dog. She was attacked. And I watched her die in my arms. To, to go from, you know, being hay, waking up in the morning and seeing her Her face just takes you away. And it's like watching 
her as a puppy. And she was a puppy. And watching, you know, her grow up. And knowing that when she was born, there was something wrong. And being a timid dog and all this other stuff. It broke me down to a point where I couldn't stand it. Then, three weeks later, I lost my cat. And she had cancer, but we didn't know it was cancer until, here's the whole story, here's how it went down. Um, she had her tear duct was exposed and it was just glowing. Her eye was being swollen. So they assumed it was a tooth infection that was doing that. And so we scheduled surgery. Me and my boyfriend go take her to um, Rascal's Animal Hospital. Um, on the day of her surgery. And... She, she was talking to me. My cat liked to talk. She would meow at you for hours and hours and hours. To look on that back, to look back on that now, I really wish they were there. I really wish they were here. And, but anyways, she were there and we just left an hour later not not an hour but like we got there at 9 she got into the room at 10 o'clock left got a phone call at 2 by my mom crying my mom sobbing on the phone and all I hear was she has cancer and we had to put her down. And at that point, I wasn't okay. I still haven't let my puppy kill her go. And she was the hardest thing for me. And then now, three weeks later, I had to put down my cat. It messed me up completely. Because I am a strong animal lover. I really am. I I have a dog that's that's her. That's my other baby. The puppy she was only six months and she's seven years old. If I lose this one, she's she's gonna be the death of me. Let's say that. And then yeah. Right, I'll tell you guys another update on her, but I'll try to do as much vlogs as I can. And I'm sorry if this vlog's really all scrambled, but I'm trying to um, <laughs> establish everything out there, but um, I will get to it eventually. But um, after my cat, she, I got them both cremated actually. I have them both cremated. They're on my dresser. They've always stayed on my dresser. And I got myself this little ring to signify, since it's a rainbow ring and heaven, the way you get to heaven is crossing the rainbow bridge by Christian standards and everybody else's standards and so... That's what I believe, and if Hadley, which is the dog that I just showed you, and the cat, Spooky, and the puppy, Killer, that I'm talking about, if they, if she passes and then I go, I'll see them on that side. I'll see them on the other side. And I really miss them. 
And if you do deal with animals that pass away, don't be afraid. You have to be strong. If you have to face them being put down, you gotta be strong. Because the only person that they know that have taken care of them and want them to be okay is you. And with my brothers with autism, I show my awareness by having a tattoo. And I have one. And it's your hugging a puzzle piece. And the guy that did it, he's like, that's the cutest tattoo I've ever done. And when I went home and I showed my autistic brothers, one of them hugged, they both hugged me. And I cried. Because they'll never have a normal life. They'll never have the normal life that, you know, I have. They'll never have that. And whose life is normal. And so, I conclude this video. And, yeah, hopefully I'll make more. So, see you guys later. See you next time.